OB, you see Greg Anthony. We also sat, have a very special guest. You just saw the role in Therese Halle Burton joins us, all rookie performer from the first team from 2020. Uh, and by the way, there's a kind of a, a little trade that happened midseason. You go to the Pacers <laughs> and start balling. You're already balling in Sacramento. But welcome. Thank you for joining us. First question I got to ask you, a lot of things happened this season. What was the most important thing that you learned this season? I would just say probably the business aspect of it. Um, it definitely caught me by surprise. I've said that a million times right now. <laughs> uh, but it just happened fast, you know what I'm saying? And uh, had to back up and get out of there. And never in a million years thought it would happen, but, you know, here we are. Yeah, I, I was sitting courtside at the game, and I mentioned something to you, and I still stand by that. We'll talk about that off camera, but nevertheless, <laughs> You fit right in in Indiana. Obviously, there weren't a lot of wins. The team's still in transition. Moving forward, you know, what do you see with this team in your role with the Pacers? Yeah, I think they just, you know, trust me with the ball in my hands a lot. Uh, allow us to get out and play in transition. That's where I feel like I'm at my best. Um, you know, when I got there, we scored a lot. We just didn't get enough stops to, to win games. And I think that's going to be, you know, big for us next year. Get stops and then, uh, and then we'll be able to score. Oh, and Tyrese, you talked about the defense, and that was actually one of the issues in Sacramento as well for you guys. Um, philosophically, you've spent some time with Coach Carlisle, and he's more of a defensive-oriented guy. What do you think the emphasis is going to be for you guys in terms of your style defensively? Yeah, I think just getting into guys, you know, finishing possessions. You know, I think uh, we got enough guys that, you know, playing passing lanes can get stops, get steals, and things like that. But just being solid, um, you know, sticking to, to, to what he says. And, uh, you know, he's challenged me a lot since I've gotten there, to be honest with you. He's asked a lot more of me, and, um, you know, I'm just trying to accept that challenge. Well, and, and you know, you talked about the business side of it. Let me guess, you probably stayed in a hotel, or did you, for the basically the whole time that you were in Indianapolis, or did you find somewhere they have somewhere for you? Yeah, I would have been cool. I was in the hotel. I would have been cool at the hotel. My girl was like, we got to get an apartment, <laughs> so <laughs> we got an apartment after, you know, a couple weeks. Do you, are you guys downtown because the practice facility arena's there? Are you kind of acclimated now with, with Indianapolis, made some friends and, and what have you? Yeah, yeah, our hotel was right there, you know, downtown, but we moved kind of. 20 minutes away. A lot of people live in like the Carmel Fishers area. So, um, yeah, just trying to get used to, to driving to the facility. And I just got to compliment you because I've seen, you know, obviously you put up numbers, but you had two different games this season, over 15 assists, zero turnovers. You really obviously take care of the ball. Where does that come from being so savvy with the ball, but not turning it over? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think just I hate turning the ball over so much. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. I hate doing it. It makes me feel week to be honest with you so uh you know just trying to take care of the ball and but it, it's, it's a part of it too. turn the ball over you know you learn from that so I think I've I've learned in, in in games in my NBA career that's allowed me to you know take care of the ball at a high level games in your career Buddy Hill comes over in the trade with you from Sacramento how's that relationship continued to develop with you two guys being with a new team yeah I, I think we get along really well we have a really good relationship off the floor so you know for us to play there he's like my big brother uh he him and uh him and Tristan joked a little bit when you know when Tristan got traded with us he joked it was like uh big brother dropping little bro off at school so uh, <laughs> having, having Buddy with me has been a lot of fun and you talked about it with Buddy you guys were obviously good friends in, in Sacramento but a lot of times with something like this transpires you actually become closer because you're both in that situation did you guys end up having more heart to hearts because of that yeah for sure 100 percent we actually went on vacation together after the season so uh we definitely grew closer had a lot more sit downs and and just conversations just because it's i know he kind of expected it i didn't so just kind of having those conversations L let me ask you this now that you're in the nba and you're playing at a high level i'm sure you're watching some of the postseason What's what what's different about that from your perspective now as an NBA player as opposed to when you watched it before you got to the league when you watch how the game is played in the postseason. Yeah I think the physicality more so than anything you know they let guys get away with a lot more um, you can you can touch more use your hands more um, you know they're 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 trying to keep the foul counts down just you know it's physical guys are really getting after it and I also think adjustments the adjustments game to game basis are crazy compared to you know how they guard in the regular season they'll guard guys completely different from a game-to-game -game basis one last thing you you and my son are doing is it the nft now what what, what are you guys doing? he told me that you turned him on to that yeah 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 yeah. so i you know we are big. he's another guy who's really big into it i think just us being young guys coming in when it got big 
uh, that just allowed us to, to use our platform to okay. get really big. In I don't know nothing about it. I, I don't know nothing about it either. I, know, I, I think it's NFT, though, right? Yeah, NFT. <laughs> NFT. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I got you're it right. right. So, right. I mean, you talked about playoffs, GA. I got to ask you who you got tonight. I mean, we got games on our Ooh, network. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. got the Sixers. We got the Heat. I mean, who you got in that game? Yeah, I, in the first game, I got I got uh, Miami. Okay. Yeah, I think it's it's hard for, for Philly without without. Way to go, go out on a limb, Tyrese. Yeah, that wasn't there. a crazy take, you know? <laughs> wasn't a crazy take Play at game all. tonight. Mavs, Suns. Ooh. Tough one. Yeah, that's a tough one. I'd probably say Phoenix. I think they go six, though. I think, you know, Luka's obviously amazing, but I think, you know, DeAndre down low creates a whole different, you know, part of the game for, for Dallas. Makes it hard for them. So, I'll, I'll take uh, Phoenix and six, ultimately. There it is. He said he's been amazing on the floor in 26 games with the Pacers. Hey, 17 and 9, 11 double-doubles. This man is a baller. Pay attention mm-hmm. just in case you don't know. Tyrese, we appreciate you for yeah. joining us. Appreciate it. Yes, Thank indeed. Got that hey. drip on. Oh, man. He swagged out 